So on the bridge, um, we do have a chart table where we review charts. Um, primarily, though, the uh, ECTIS electronic charting system is utilized for looking at routes, water depths, etc. Um, and then additionally, we can pull up uh, surveys from the Army Corps of Engineers from their website. From the deck equipment standpoint, I mean, that's just generally the crew doing their, their checks, um, making sure that all equip equipment is functional. And then engineering, um, obviously we're just going through planned fuel burn, um, how, much, how many days are going to be underway, can, you know, can we hold enough sewage for the trip, so on and so forth, do we have enough water? So primarily our watch standard is ensuring the ship stays afloat, uh, make sure there's no fire, fire alarms, uh, smoke. They... Uh, what they require is a, a functional workstation for log keeping practices, um, study, etc. Uh, they're also a security watch standard, so they do need to obviously be able to have a, a position where they can work from a computer and still see out on the ship. Uh, average work day is going to be completing maintenance procedure cards. Um, sometimes we'll do a, a fast cruise where you do um, underway type drills, but at the pier. Um, Typically, a lot of time is spent uh, pre-planning uh, for an Aton trip of loading out and ensuring we have the appropriate supplies for that trip, you know, procurement requests, you name it, a little bit of everything. Okay, from, from a loading standpoint, uh, we'll take the same um, spreadsheet we keep, just telling us what we're going to need for that trip. Um, we generally plan our trips around the maximum number of piles that we can carry on board. Hopefully it's uh, the trip is that or less. Um, from there, it's uh, determining what order of which we think we're gonna work the aids and that brings back up into the bridge and then relaying that information to the deck. Um, the piles themselves, um, depending on the pile length, we carry 50 foot and 60 foot piles, depending on our work areas. Uh, different depths of water require different pile lengths. Generally speaking, what I'm working is with 50-foot piles due to the uh, depths of water in which I'm working and the reach of my crane. Um, so uh, depending on the type of arrangement, uh, a single pile, two piles, or three pile, generally, other than just taking a little more time, there's not a major, major difference. Uh, but when you go to a four-pile range structure, uh, that is a, a, a major difference between running a single pile and building that structure. Um, the four pile structure requires far more deck space to carry the entire range package. Um, it requires more reach to be able to drive the piles um, and line them up so that you get a nice square plumb range structure of which to set your tower on. Uh, there's far more involvement with a four pile. As we're making the approach to it, you ensure that it, it either is or isn't on station, whether or not you're gonna be removing wreckage or picking up a temporary buoy. Um, traffic is a major consideration, so you have to determine your approach to that aid. And since piles are normally driven in shallow water, you can't necessarily approach it from 360 degrees. Oftentimes you have to be perpendicular to the channel, uh, blocking the channel or um, there's other times you're lucky and you can kind of come in parallel at a slight angle, but we need to watch for traffic, water depths, bottom type, um, the potential for wreckage and what type of wreckage, whether it's wood or steel, um, whether or not that aid is actually marking the, the most appropriate depth. So the deck, um, once they've been given the, the, this is the go ahead and this is the pile we're gonna work, um, they're setting up to ensure that the crane is ready, the pile is all slung up, uh, they have ladders, they have day boards, they have their light programmed if it has a light on it. Um, and then they're watching to see what what we're going to pick up. Again, If the, is there wreckage that we need to sling up and break off in order to get on a sign position? Is there a buoy that needs to be picked up? Uh, do we need to take a light off that buoy to reuse it on the pile we're about to drive? Um, so they spent a good amount of time um, setting up the deck to be efficient.
Uh, our small boat, the, really the two primary things that we util utilize it for is um, pulling river buoys off the bank that the cutter is unable to reach and dragging them out to the cutter. And then secondly, uh, we use it as a basically like a, a work platform, like a paint float almost. When you're building a four pile range structure, you have to be able to access different size of the structure uh, and heights to drill holes. Uh, cutter axes area of responsibility is pretty diverse. Um, so a shallow draft is important. Uh, a very sturdy flat bottom is important. We are 75 foot tug pushing a 68 foot barge. Um, in a sense, it's pretty good because we're, our length allows us to, to pivot in some pretty tight places by being shorter like this. Um, it allows me to only block partial on some of the channels when I'm pushed in perpendicular to work and aid. But the biggest problem that we run into is Cutter Axe has several aids that are offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. The rolling swell that we get, it causes quite a bit of movement. We need a larger sewage capacity. We typically are able to carry about eight days worth of food um, before we start running low. We are in an environment that is extremely hot and extremely humid. Um, we do have an ice maker as part of our mess deck. Um, honestly, it needs a bigger capacity, but this is what we have, so we work with it. So a large capacity ice maker, I think is necessary for the boats that are gonna be working in the south. So our spuds are uh, just giant half inch thick uh, 12 by 12 steel um, with a point on the bottom of them. They're controlled uh, on axe by air operated winches. And what they're used is, is as a means to secure the cutter in place so it doesn't move so that we can precision punch a pile. So we have um, barely enough seating. Um, generally speaking, you can't get every single person sitting in a seat to eat on the mess deck all at once. Uh, for all hands trainings, you know, one or two people, three people will stand. So our fantail is where we we have our repair locker and the gear is stowed. Uh, also, you know, the, the, the most dangerous of emergencies, of course, is a fire in the engine room. So being set up right there puts you with the access points and fire hoses, AFFF, etc., for an engine room fire.